Corey, money has been uh, sneaking back into stocks, but it's really been a remarkable story into the precious metals and a lot of hard commodities. Uh, gold, for example, up north of two and a third percent. Look at silver up almost seven percent. Copper doing quite well as well. Um, uh, don't say uh, Robert Kiyosaki wasn't telling you that this was a good haven in these dicey times. Uh, he said that there's instability everywhere. It's panning out today, certainly in the banking sector, for how long is anyone's guess. But the uh, rich dad, uh, poor dad, cottage industry, as I like to call them, kind enough to join us right now. Robert, all those investments are doing quite nicely. Now, a lot of it could be a knee-jerk concern about the stability of the banking system and doubts about where it goes. Safe haven to park cash. What do you think, and how long does it last? Well, the problem is, as you know, uh, for years it kept dropping interest rates, and now Powell's raising it. The real problem is the bond market's crashing, and the bond market is systemic, as you know. I mean, I'm, I'm concerned about IRAs, pension plans, and all that. So, uh, this is more than it's. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm concerned, should I say? And, you know, thank you for all these years letting me come on your program and say buy silver, buy gold. Because <laughs> when I first heard it coming on, I think this was $3 and this was $50. And now it's 2000 It didn't get any bigger, Neil. It's still, you know, No, it did not get any bigger. But, but you know what's interesting no. today, Robert, if you look at it, and it might be just a sort of a coincidental blip. All are rising. Bond prices rising, yields collapsing. Uh, you know, a 10-year note, for example, that was over 4% last week is around 3.45% today when I last looked. So bonds doing well, uh, you know, stocks holding up fairly well, uh, bank stocks off their lows, metals doing just fine. Um, that can't continue indefinitely. So what wins out? Now, the thing that I see is that the Fed and the FDIC are signaling hyperinflation which makes gold and silver even better because this thing here is trash. They're going to print more and more of this fake money. And that's what the Fed and the FDIC is signaling. We're going to print as much of this as possible to keep the crash from accelerating. But they're the, they're the guys who are causing it. <laughs> so in other words, with the Federal Reserve now saying, essentially, we're going to be a backstop to say nothing of the U.S. government, for all these institutions okay. in trouble, now guaranteeing deposits for those with way more than $250,000 out of bank, three different banks right now. You think that will yeah. be inflationary, and you think uh, the, the pause that some are expecting on the part of the Federal Reserve on, on raising rates will only exacerbate this? Well, they have to bail out now, which is not quite legal anymore. But as I said, they're going to print more and more of this stuff, and it makes this stuff gold. And I think this is the best investment of all is silver, because every Tomahawk missile has 30 pounds of silver in it. Every time they push that missile button, 30 pounds of silver disappears. So we're in, big, we're in serious trouble. And the Fed and the FDIC are signaling we're going to do whatever it takes, and that means print more of this stuff here. And this so is trash. Stepping so back, stepping back from what you like about metals and, and, and putting your money in a place that can sort of counter what we're seeing, what are you seeing in terms of inflation? Now, the Federal Reserve has been busy now a year ago, what, Friday, when they started raising interest rates going from zero to close to 5% where we are now on the federal funds, the overnight bank lending rate. Um, do you see that paused indefinitely? Do you see any possibility they reverse action? Or what happens now? I mean, taking a look at the whole, you know, the whole kettle. Well, l let me say it again. The problem is the bond market. And my prediction, you know, I called uh, Lehman Brothers years ago. And uh, I think the next bank to go is Credit Suisse. And if that really? happens, if Japan... Because of, its, it. because of its exposure to a lot of this? Yes, because the bond market is crashing. You know, all those bonds, let's say you're getting, you're getting paid 5% for a bond and it goes to 10%, the 5% bond crashes. And the bond market is much bigger than the stock market, as we know. So Absolutely. the Fed is the problem. And they're the, what they say, the firemen and the arson. <laughs> you know what's weird about so, this, this jolt, Robert? I want to get your thoughts on it. 
this bank, Silicon Valley Bank, they could talk about poor management. I know a lot has been said about that. But more than half their overall portfolio was in U.S. Treasuries, Treasury notes and bonds. Certainly not mortgage-backed derivatives, certainly not crappy mortgage-backed derivatives sold in separate pools to unwilling and unknowing investors. So they were doing something that seems on paper to have been the right thing, the conservative thing. The irony was that they were buying a lot of this when rates were at zero, prices were a lot higher for Treasury notes and bonds, and when they had to unload some money, they were underwater. So you can't yep. win uh, in that environment. No. And that's why I said the biggest problem, as you know, is the bond market, which is the biggest market in the world. And all the countries of the world are in U.S. bills, you know, T-bills and T-bonds. And, um, and we had the BRICS nations coming up, and they hate us, and they might switch to the Chinese gold yuan. So we're in serious trouble. The U.S. dollar is losing its hege hegemony in the world right now. So, and they're going to print more and more and more of this trying to keep this thing from sinking. So that's why... But they've you know, been doing that, today. but that's been going on for years, right, Robert? I mean, we have these huge days like this, and you're quite right to note it's a, it's a clear phenomenon today. But we've had these yeah. punctuating our history over the last 20-plus years. What makes this go around different? Because our debt to GDP is over 130, and every time they raise those interest rates... America's um, taxpayer gets hammered. And uh, the, my concern is the pensions are in trouble because they're loaded with bonds also. And my generation, mm -hmm. the boomers, we're starting to retire. So this is the, you know, the perfect storm in many ways. So I, like I said again, is I think the Fed and the FDIC signaled they're going to print again, which makes stocks good. But this little silver coin here is still the best. It's 35 bucks, you know. So I, I reckon anybody can afford $35, and I'm concerned about Credit Suisse. Interesting. I have heard that before. If you get a big, big bank that has, has this exposure, and Credit Suisse does have a lot of conservative treasuries all in its portfolio, that has been raised. The bank said it is well-financed, well-secured, and all of that. But we'll watch it closely. Robert, always good seeing you, even with a forecast like that. Robert Kiyosaki, the rich dad. Poor Dad, our best-selling author, has turned that into a cottage industry. He's been at a lot of these phenomena. Remember, he saw Lehman Brothers coming long before anyone else in the last meltdown. Let's pray this time what he's seeing doesn't help it with this potential meltdown. We shall I'm watch it closely. I'm right. I hope you are. And I love your forecast and everything else, Robert. But, man, that's a scary scenario for the whole world.